Hey, how's it going, guys? And welcome to another episode of Scape Topics. Now, if you're unaware and you haven't seen my first episode of Scape Topics, essentially this is just a series of where I can talk about pretty much anything to do with the game, uh, whether it's like a new update, just something I want to talk about in general. Honestly, it can be anything. But today what we're going to be talking about is the new balancing update that they did today and why it is absolutely horrible. Uh, now, the first thing... I'm going to jump right into this. Now, the first thing, this is actually really cool. Uh, starting off today's changes, we actually get the addition of the world map feature, which is really cool. Now, OS Buddy already has um, the world map feature, which I'm assuming most of you probably use, as as I do myself. Uh, but this one actually, in my opinion, looks actually really cool. Uh, so far, they actually introduced some features to where you can zero in on exactly where you want to go. Say you're in the middle of like Relica or something and you want to know the nearest bank, you can click on that and it can actually show you the nearest bank uh, like here. So it's actually going to pinpoint you to where that bank is. So I guess you just click on it and it'll show you the nearest one, highlight them on the map. That is actually really cool. Uh, going down a little bit more, this is another cool feature. Is say you're looking for a specific area, but you don't want to drag around and look for it. You can actually search it in the bottom left here, and it'll go right to where that is on the world map. So that's pretty useful. Um, you know, some people like myself know the maps pretty good, but there's always places that we kind of forget. Whether you're doing a clue scroll, whatever, you need to get to a certain location. Typing that in, you know the name of it, not exactly where it's at. That can be really useful. Uh, in addition to that, what I also thought was really cool is this feature right here. Now, none of this I've actually tried out, but I will say that it does look really cool. So this feature right here, I did read up on it a little bit more, but say you are in a new Slayer dungeon something. Hell, maybe you're in a dungeon that you just haven't explored before. You know there's monsters in there. You don't exactly know where they are at, though. Maybe it's a big dungeon. Maybe you've never been in Neve's Cave, whatever. You can actually search what specific monster you want, and it'll actually show you the path of how to get there within that dungeon. That's actually pretty cool. Right here, the previewing Waterbirth dungeon. I'm not sure what exactly they typed in to maybe go look at something or look for a monster or whatever, but I still think that is a really cool feature. If you haven't explored a dungeon before, you don't know where a certain monster is for Slayer, whatever you're there for, that's actually a pretty cool feature that I look forward to using. Ah, now here it comes to the part of the video where I actually start to get a bit salty. Uh, these are the balancing changes. Now, I, first of all, before I get into this, I do want to go ahead and say that I am all for change on old school. It's kind of like what old school is. It's not necessarily the same as 2007 was, clearly, but the changes that come into the game, as long as they are voted for by the community and they are wanted by the community, I am all for it. It is free to come into the game, and that makes perfect sense. That is the foundation of old school right there, is that anything that comes into the game is voted upon, is wanted by the community first, okay? Now, when old school first started, Jagex made that very clear. They said that if anything is to come into the game, any updates at all, the community is going to say so first. Their consent is needed for that to come into the game. So with it, with that, keeping that in mind, remember that I said that. Let's go ahead and go into what's on. So the first addition that they did, the first change, sorry, that they did was changing Zora's drop table. Now, we all know that Zora is very overpowered for money. If you know how to do Zora and you can consistently do it, very few other options are comparable to how good Zora is consistent money making wise and they made a big change to it today. So to address the overpoweredness of how good Zora is and how good it is to make money, they've reduced the average value of loot from Zora today by roughly 30%. As a part of this change, we've also replaced some of Zora's resource drops with items which will have a less significant economic impact on skillers. Now I completely understand why this update was made. I, you know, I get it. Like I said, we all know Zora is overpowered. I know a friend made a video on this already talking about it. Uh, he pointed out in his video that, you know, he was really mad because he didn't get on his Iron Man and do Zora as much as he wanted to before this nerf. I myself am in the same shoes. I got all the drops that I wanted, Tanzanite Fang, Serpentine, uh, Visage. Uh, what are the other ones? We have the Magic Fang and the Onyx. I got all of those, and I once I got all of those, I considered my stuff done with Zora for now, so I stopped doing it. Had I known this nerf was coming, I probably would have camped it a bit more. But regardless of the fact, 
Uh, I did know that Zora needed a change to it because it was very overpowered. Uh, some of these were very, very interesting. Some like some a lot of the herbs dropped from 20 to 25, 20 to 30, whatever. Snapdragons have reduced in half from 20 to 10. Magic logs. This is this is a big one. Um, you used to get a hundred magic logs from Zora, which was amazing. It was one of the better drops you could get. But now, guess what? You're gonna get 35 U logs, which uh, is a pretty drastic change, honestly. Uh, the dragon bones. Honestly, I've i you know I've done a lot of Zora camping in the past. You didn't seem like you got a lot of dragon bones at all. It's you're not getting them every kill, and it's not adding up that much. And the fact that they reduced that from 30 to 12. That is a big change. You're getting 18 less dragon bones per kill. Uh, let's see. Also, Ceridome and Bruce have been replaced by Bird's Nest. Now, in a way, I kind of like this because Toad Flax is very easy to get in this game. Toad Flax seeds are one of the most abundant seeds that is, you know, available for us to get. Most monsters will actually drop a lot of Toad Flax seeds. So getting those Toad Flaxes are actually going to provide, in coordination with this Bird Nest drop, more Herblore XP. Making your say, own Sword Dammer Bruise, you're going to get Herbal XP, which ultimately, I guess, how, I'm pretty sure you got 10 Sarah Bruise per drop before, so I'm assuming if they just replace that with Bird's Nest, you're now just going to be getting Bird's Nest instead, which is actually okay with me. I think that's actually kind of cool, because if you have the Herblore level to make Bruise, you're kind of getting a rewarded because you're making your own Sarah Bruise. And if you're doing a lot of Zora, you're going to be making a lot of Cerebrews, which means you're going to be getting a decent amount of Ripple XP, and you're still going to get the same number of Cerebrews. In a way, because you still get, when you make a Cerebrew, you're making three doses. And I'm pretty sure when you got the Cere drop before, the Cerebrum and Drews, Bruce, sorry, you got four doses. So it's a bit of a change there, but the Herbal XP is nice. Okay, so on to the next one, the Serpentine Helm. This is a big one, and this is one that's going to piss off a lot of people. I know that for a fact. So the Serpentine Helm provides unmatched defensive and offensive stats and effects in old school. I completely agree with that. Serpentine Helm is very good. It's a must-have for almost any combat activity in old school. Its outstanding stats and venom slash poison effects leave us very little room to introduce helmets of a similar tier. It is near impossible to design around the helmet in its current state without damaging the long-term health of old school. To address this, they have removed the venom effect to enemies, and its strength bonus has been reduced from plus 5 to plus 3. Now, I don't think so many people are going to be mad about the strength bonus. People, and myself, are going to be really upset about the Venom effect. Now, the reason the Serpentine Helmet was so good was because any damage that a monster did, besides some bosses, I know some bosses in the game might still get affected by it, but God Wars, for example, the Serpentine Helm was very good because while you're killing the boss, any of those minions that were attacking you and dealt damage to you had a chance to get Venomed. So by the time you actually got done killing the boss, the minions were almost dead, so you didn't have to spend nearly as much time or supplies killing those minions so you can worry less about the minions and worry more about the boss so completely removing that venom effect is going to make bossing a lot more challenging especially for us iron men who were planning on doing bando solos to help us out with minions whatever that's going to be a huge difference to the game and that's going to drastically affect how bossing works in old school in addition to the Serpentine Helm, the Void Knight range set was also nerfed. Now, the Void Knight set I, has literally been the exact same. The only change that the old school RuneScape team has made to Void since the release of old school was the Elite Upgrade, which all that was was a prayer bonus. However, today they decided that it's too overpowered, and they literally cut the bonus, the damage bonus from Void, in half from 20% to 10%. Now, I'm not much of a PKer, but I, and I don't know how much that's going to affect PKing, but still, you're messing around with Void, and I'll get to a second on what I think about that. Uh, moving on to this, like I said, I'm not much of a PKer, but I do understand why this one is. It, it makes sense. So if you're unaware, a lot of times when you're getting attacked in the wilderness and you know you're going to die, a lot of times what people would do is they would drop their items so they could run back after the person had killed them and retrieve whatever items they dropped as long as you got back quick enough. Well, now how to combat that, they basically made it to where if you drop anything in the wilderness, it's going to appear on the ground pretty much instantly. Not pretty much. It will appear instantly. So 
it, it basically makes that to where it's impossible. So if you are in the in wilderness and you're getting attacked, you have valuable items you don't want to lose on you, you literally have to keep that on you and try your absolute damn hardest not to die. That's pretty much all you can do. Now, moving on, we have the Karamja General Store. Now, I never really used this much. I always kept a high alking mostly, but I'm pretty sure this makes it obsolete. They made it to where uh, selling to the Karamja General Store now has a worth it's less than the high alk value. So it's not even worth doing that. You might as well high alk it. And I'm pretty sure this Karamja General Store is now going to be dead com content compared to that. Now, I'm not going to talk about this. I was mainly today wanting to focus on all the nerfs and balancing changes they did. And why I wanted to talk about why it was a bad thing. Not necessarily that what changes they did were bad, but because they didn't ask us the community first. So... Like I said before, we all knew that Zora was overpowered, okay? If you know how to do Zora, you're going to make a lot of money. You can do it a lot. You can grind that out, and it's probably one of the best, if not the best, moneymaker in the game. I get that. But all of a sudden, changing the game and how it's worked after it's been out for so long already, the community has gotten used to it, they have figured out ways to use the Serpentine Helm, they avoid Night even, Void Knight armor has been around for years, and it's never had an update, and they're just now deciding to change it. All right, I get it. Void Knight is overpowered, okay? It might need some balancing issues, but you can't just throw out changes and leave it there. You have to ask us first. The community, we're not dumb. We know there are problems with the game, but you simply cannot put changes in the game and completely ignore the foundations of old school RuneScape, which is the community decides what comes into the game, which also happens to include balancing changes. Zora's drop table. Yes, it was overpowered. Talk to us. Put like a link under a poll. Let us talk back to you and see, listen, this is how we can change it. Let's fix it this way. Serpentine Helm. So many people I know for a fact are going to be mad and so pissed off about that Venom effect. Tell you what, you ask us, poll it, say, do you all want this Serpentine Helm to be nerfed? Okay, if 75%, however, the majority of people want it fixed, whatever, sure, go for it. I'm all for that. But you can't just throw it into the game and not ask us. Same with the Void Knight set, okay? I'm not a PKer, and I'm fine with that. And I don't know how that affects PKing that much. With that 10%, Damage reduction, I'm not sure how that affects it, but it's still making changes to the game without asking us first. So that is where I'm really starting to get pissed off because, like I said, I'm all for changes to the game. If you're trying to make a game change that's going to help the community, go for it. But contact us. Let us know. Tell us kind of – let we're in the know of this too. We know – Trust me, as a community, we know what's going on in the game, and we know what needs fixing and what doesn't. If we don't want fixing to the Serpentine Helm or the Void Knight set, well, damn, there's no reason you should change that if the community wants it. So, guys, with that being said, I think I'm going to end the video here. This has been the second episode of Scape Topics, so I tell you what, thank you for listening today. I really appreciate it. Let me like, dislike, comment, do whatever you want. Tell me your thoughts on this new update. I'll be happy to talk to you on the comments, but thank you for listening. Hope that I helped you grind a little bit, or if you just were tuning in, I really appreciate you listening in. So anyways, guys, till next time.